Hey everyone and welcome back to Build UX. In this episode of the CRM Inbox series, we're going to finalize the design of each of the icons we find throughout the UI, and then create a system for conveniently swapping between different icons as needed. So taking a look at our design files here in Figma, let's take stock of all the icons we'll need to finalize. Now in a previous episode, we manually recreated the icons that we found in the original source materials. But I would like to go through a process of making sure there's a consistent bounding or view box around each of these icons, and then also refining their dimensions to make sure that they fall neatly on a pixel grid. So to better explain this, I'm gonna pick one of these icons and we'll go through the process together, but going through the full set of icons throughout this UI is kind of beyond the scope of this video. So just to speed things up here, I'm gonna focus in on this folder icon and kind of walk through the process that it would take with all the icons throughout this design. First thing, I'm gonna copy this icon folder group out and let's just go somewhere lower in our file here, pasting that in. I'm gonna give this frame a dark background just so we can see our work and honing in on this icon, let's first establish the dimensions that we want. So I'm gonna rename this frame to icons and maybe to be more specific about this stage, let's call it icon drafts. This is basically a working file to preserve the different iterations that we apply to these icons to get them finalized. But if we mess up any stage, we should have any steps neatly kept so we can always revert and start from scratch. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drag out a frame that is 24 by 24. And this will basically be the bounding or view box for this icon. Now getting that centered up within this frame, I'm gonna quickly disable the background color so we can better see the pixel grid beneath it. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is ungroup this layer and then let's create a rectangle that matches the dimensions of this frame. So 24 by 24 and this will be the icon plate. We're going to apply a temporary fill on here. Let's just pick something a little bit lighter than the main background. Let's say elevation one background. Now from here, I'd like to make better use of the available space within this view box. So I think I'm gonna increase the overall width of this folder by two pixels. But to make sure I'm not skewing some of these shapes like this 45 degree path, I'm gonna first double click into here and let's select some of these vector points. So selecting this left group, I'm gonna nudge that over by one pixel. And then this right group, I'm gonna do the same thing. And now with that added space, I'm gonna bring over this label so it better matches the available width. And I also like to have a little bit more predictable values when designing SVG icons. So here I have two by eight, having nice rounded values is much easier to mentally keep track of and ensure consistent spacing within the icon designs. Lastly, I saw when I was reviewing the reference design that everything has kind of a rounded feel to it. So I think I'm gonna apply a corner radius of one to this label just to keep in theme with some of the other design elements around these rounded corners we find on much of the icons. Now with that in place, let's rename this frame to be icon folder. And then from here, we can duplicate this out to make further improvements, but preserve our previous step. All right, so with this second step of refinement, what I like to do is basically flatten everything down as much as possible. So with this icon folder body, it is currently a path with a stroke. What I'd like to do is outline this stroke either using Control or Command and Shift O or using the right click panel here. So with this outlined, you can see that now we've applied a fill. And I think what I'd like to do is just set everything to be high contrast for the dark theme. And we can actually go back to our draft, to make sure that those get applied there as well. All right, so I like to have as unopinionated of a fill color as possible when creating original icons. And then that way, when you drag them into your design, you can adapt them as needed. The last step of refinement for this icon is just to flatten everything down. So I'm gonna hit Control or Command E to combine this into a single vector path. And we can rename this icon folder. And I'm just gonna call this the icon within this group. All right, next up, we're ready to actually componentize this. And we'd be all set to use this throughout our design. 
All right, now to speed things up, I'm going to go through this same process with all of the icons that you see in this design, and then I'll check back in with that progress. All right, so with all those icons taken care of, here's what we have. Here on the left, we have our icon drafts, where I started to get things refined but didn't flatten everything down just yet. And then on the right here, we have our dark icons. So if we open up these files, we can take a look. I realized that we have two main sizes of icons. So the first one has a 24 by 24 view box, and then the second set has this smaller variation at 16 by 16. Also, I renamed these icons to reflect their dark theme, and that'll allow us to have variations for the light UI as well. So from here, the next step is to basically create button components that would wrap some of these interactive icons. And with this, we can create the default hover and focus states that'll be used throughout the design, regardless of which specific icon you select. And because of our naming convention, we only have to build these buttons once for each of the large and smaller sizes, and then you'll be able to use instant swapping to basically trade out for any icon that you need. So first off, I'm going to create a new frame here. Let's give it that dark background and get it aligned with the rest of the frames here. So I'm going to send this frame to the bottom of our layers panel, and let's rename it to be icon buttons with the dark theme. Now, because we have these componentized, we can go over to our components tab, open up our icons dark group, and let's just start off with an instance of this search icon. Now, with this dropped into place, I'd like our icon buttons to have a pretty sufficient tap target size. So, for accessibility and also just general usability on mobile and other devices, it's good to have at least a 48 by 48 dimension around most interactive items. So with this frame, I'm going to remove the background color and we can center up the icon within this frame. And just to make sure that these dimensions are always respected, it'd be great to drag in a plate as well. So with this plate, we won't have any fill on it, but let's drag it into our layers and rename it as icon button plate. All right, so next up, let's figure out what the hover and focus style should look like for this. So I think I'm going to do something interesting with a circular indicator on hover that comes into play and shows beneath the icon. And for this, I think I'm going to use that same elevation one background color just to give a little bit more differentiation between the icon and the background. So let's make sure this is centered up and we can rename this shape to be the icon button hover plate. All right, next up, let's turn our attention to the focus indicator. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and let's rename this to be the focus ring. Now what I'm going to do is drag it down to come below the hover plate. I'm going to remove the fill, but apply a stroke that is going to be our high contrast light color. And right now it's currently set to the inside. Let's make sure that's on the outside of this shape. And let's bump up the border to be two pixels. So with these components in place, we can turn off the hover and focus styles. And let's componentize this to be our icon button. This will be the dark theme and the default state. I'm going to copy out another instance of this. And with that, we can start focusing on getting the hover styles componentized. So I'm going to turn on that hover plate, componentize this, and rename it to icon button dark hover. And then lastly, dragging out another instance of our default. Let's take care of the focus state. So we'll bring on both the hover plate and the focus ring, componentize this, and rename it for that state. All right, next up, I'm going to do a very similar thing for the couple of buttons that have small icons and a small tap target as well. So although it's best to ensure a 48 by 48 tap target whenever possible, there's some UI where there's just not enough available space. So the next best thing is to go as large as you can without affecting things too severely. So with this, I'm going to grab a smaller icon. Let's use this chevron to basically establish the smaller icon button. Now these smaller icon buttons are going to have a 32 by 32 frame. So let's get that in place. 
And I'm going to constrain proportions. I probably should do this actually across the board on these button icons. One thing I forgot to do on the larger variation is to set constraints as needed. So the actual icon should be center center, as well as the hover and focus rings. All right, so with that taken care of, let's turn our attention back to this smaller variation of the button. So for the frame, let's remove the background color. We'll drag out a rectangle of the same dimension to act as our plate. This will be set to scale in both directions. And we can rename it icon button small. And this will be the plate. Removing the fill on this as well. Let's get this icon centered up as needed. And then we're going to do a similar treatment for the hover and focus styles. So hitting O for the ellipse tool, I'm going to drag out a circle that's 24 by 24, constraining those proportions. And let's give it a fill of that elevation background start. Arranging our layers, let's rename this to icon button small. This will be the hover plate. And then we'll duplicate this one more time for the focus ring. Now again, that focus ring won't have a fill. We'll apply a stroke instead. This will be the high contrast light, two pixels on the outside. Now we can take all of these elements, get them centered up within our frame, and we should have everything we need for the variations of this smaller icon button. So we can rename this frame to icon button small. And let's make sure we note that this is also for the dark theme and get it componentized. I just realized for these regular buttons, we're gonna to have to rename these so that the size is indicated in their naming as well. So let's say dark, we'll just say that these are the large variation and we have our corresponding states still preserved in the naming. All right, so with our small icon button, let's make sure that, looks like things are a little bit out of center here. So I'm gonna double check on that real quick. So for some reason, it looks like our hover and focus ring aren't centering up in this design. Okay, I just had to manually snap that into place. Not sure why that happened, but we're all good now. So let's turn those off for our default state. And then let's drag out another instance for the hover style. We'll turn on the hover plate, componentize this, and let's be sure to include the state in the name of the component. So we have our hover and default state accounted for. One last time, dragging this out for our focus styles. All right, so with that frame cleaned up, let's go ahead and move these frames into their corresponding pages. So for both the icon drafts and the icons dark, let's move these to our atoms page. Let's pop over to that page real quick and make sure everything arrived as needed. So if we zoom way out, we can see our icons all the way here on the right. Let's just drag those into place next to our logo frame. All right, and then hitting Shift-1 to zoom to fit. That's looking good. Let's go back to our Pages tab, grab these icon buttons, and these will move to our Molecules page. So I'm going to change the X and Y to zero, zero. That way we can see it come into frame and then make sure we keep our files nice and organized. All right, so with that in place, I think we're gonna stop here for now with this episode. In a previous episode, we established these sidebar variations and with our new icon buttons, as well as our UI icon system in general, we're ready to start tackling different layout areas of our design, starting first with the header in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure to look out for the next episode and we'll start componentizing our header.